through this quick. I'm gonna try to do this easy, to do this nice, and as Usher would say, slow. Ladies, gentlemen, this is the budget and fiscal report. This is a bill that is being passed by Congress. Okay? Now, a lot of you ain't gonna understand. But it's establishing a congressional budget for the United States government for the fiscal year 2018 and setting forth the appropriate budgetary levels for fiscal years 2019 to 2027. <laughs> this was introduced 2017. It was accepted. This was what they were talking about when Trump came into office. This is the budget. This is where the House and the Senate adopts the bill. They resolve their differences, and guess what? It passes! Okay? Now, hold on now. Hold on, hold on. Y'all don't know what I'm reading this for, so don't jump to nobody's conclusions. I want y'all to understand. House and this group, they, the Senate, they agree to the amendments, and they say, no exceptions. We agree. We agree, we agree, we agree. So there is a contract. It's an agreement, and a contract and an agreement are the exact same things. The parties are supposedly competent, even though they're government officials, they're public servants, but <laughs> apparently they're competent. Okay? Full summary, let's understand something. Recommends levels and amounts from 2018 to 2027. Federal revenues. Okay. Budgetary overlays. Okay. Public debt. Okay, debt held by the public. Are you holding debt? Why are you holding on to it? Let that jump go. What you doing holding on to debt? What's wrong with you? I'd say I'll tell you about these members of the public. Ladies and gentlemen, recommend, recommended new budgetary authority and overlays from 2018 fiscal year 2018 fiscal year 2027 for each major functional category, including... Now, hold on, y'all. Hold on. Can, I can't see this. Can somebody tell me what that say? The administration of who? Of justice. How you going to administer a God? This fake, false God. Hold on, y'all. The private person cannot be taxed. Corporation and its property and operations cannot be without interfering with the agency used by the government for the accomplishment of his object. The distinction between a private corporation performing blah, blah, the real property of a bank, blah, 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 in common with other real property within the state. Again, in blah, 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 the United States said that local property of the bank may be taxed by the government. Now, however, we're talking about private property. While, as a person or corporation, which serves as agencies of government, national or state, and also have private property and engaged in its own account and in business. Purely private persons and corporations under license and are franchises, which imposes little or no supervision or control. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm looking for is what is stated in the case in Redfield versus Fisher. Now, y'all remember Fisher Redfield, right? Hold on, we're going to make another window. We're going to duplicate. Now, you know what? New tab to the left. No, where's my left? It only does it to the right? I want it to the left. To the left! To the left! To the left! Rod left! R-E-D-F-I-E-L-D V -E -E Fisher F-I-S-H-E-R We always know about Redfield versus Fisher. Okay, y'all should all pay attention to Redfield versus Fisher. Very important information there. We'll be right back. Y'all didn't think we were coming back like this, did you? Ladies and gentlemen, this is Leela James. And Leela James is doing her version of Don't Speak. Now, no doubt that their version, no doubt, but Leela James does her version, and I'm a fan of Leela, because me and Leela go way back. Now, she's way behind me, so she won't be too loud, 
and but she's telling me not to speak, but I'm gonna speak anyway because I don't know how to listen. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> um, ladies and gentlemen, let me show you something. Okay, we're gonna click on Redfield versus Fisher, and then we're gonna hurry this up because I gotta go eat. I haven't eaten since about uh, about seven o'clock last evening. And as you see on the clock, if you, no, I don't know, I don't think you guys can see the clock, but if you can't, it is 11.35 in the morning, so it's almost noon, and just also want to let you guys know, it's 75 degrees and it's almost 12 o'clock, y'all have no idea, it's hardly ever 75 degrees in this, unless it's 6 o'clock in the morning, it's been kind of warm, but the last couple of days, the temperature has dropped by at least 20 degrees now e x c i s e how many no we can't do x eyes uh let's do i n d Okay, we're going to do, oh, God, there's, <laughs> uh, uh, wait, let's do cannot, uh-oh, okay, we'll do individual, unlike, I didn't like that either, okay, we're gonna do individual. Hold on. We're just gonna find it this way. Okay. Don't speak to me, y'all. Don't speak to me. Oh no. I said unlike, but I didn't do the comma. That's why I didn't like that. Ladies and gentlemen. We're going to take this whole phrase, copy, because you know it lists other cases. We're going to put this in case text. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because the private person cannot be taxed on their property. This is a, what is the word I'm looking for? A maxim. This is a precedent. Longstanding cannot be overturned. What has happened is that Congress in the United States has overturned certain maxims and principles over the years coming up with what they refer to as reasonings so the only thing it gives me is redfield versus fisher as one case it doesn't give me any reference cases so now i do parallel searches why do you just do parallel searches whoa it says my inquiry normally it says it's too short okay let's do that why, 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 tell me why, tell me why, don't speak to me, sorry, no doubt, and Leela James, you know she's done a couple more albums since this album, her first album, and I give this woman some credit, there are 25 cases that say this y'all, you better believe it, and this is why I'm showing this to you guys. Granted, plaintiff contends that the United States defendants have no right to collect income taxes on him based on the principle. Oh, I'm sorry, we're going to go to another song. I don't know why this thing is uh, not... Oh, because I have it... <laughs> sorry, I was listening to something last night, and I had it on only one song. And so we're going to have it on all songs. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is a long time coming. This is what she's talking about, her first album. Annie up, y'all. Gotta let the trumpet sound. Okay, she's talking about how long it took her to get to where she was. Ladies and gentlemen, the defendants have no right to collect income taxes on him based on the principle that the individual, unlike the corporation, cannot be taxed for the mere purpose of the privilege of existing. The individual's right to live and own property are natural rights. Okay, unfortunately, in for his cause incorrectly interprets the right 
let's go ahead. This is the versus U.S. government. This is 2004. So let's see how he incorrectly interprets. Let's see how they provide uh, principles of law. Because this is Massachusetts. Why, why, why? Okay. Unfortunately, for his cause, the plaintiff incorrectly interprets the right to exist to include the right to the fruits of his own labors without any taxation. Moreover, the case upon which the plaintiff relies is not logically so does do not logically support his argument. See, they want you to be logical. Finally, the plaintiff felt, well, where's your proof? You just make a statement. Where's your proof that it doesn't support the argument? The plaintiff has failed to establish that the United States defendants have either consented to suit or relinquished their sovereign immunity. That's what we do when they engage in commerce. Taxation is a commercial venture. That's why Congress has the right to tax commercially because of the Commerce Clause. So he doesn't have to prove they gave up that right. The moment you want to engage in taxation, you're engaging in commerce, mother... I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. They speak about logic. As the Supreme Court has explained, the United States as sovereign. No, the people are sovereign. Go back. Take a look. The sovereignty resides in the people. So collectively, the people are sovereign. Is immune from suit. Save it consents to be sued. When it engages in commerce. And the term of the consent to be sued in any court defined that court's jurisdiction to entertain the suit. To that end, the plaintiff's response to the defendant's motion reflects a deep-seated misunderstanding not only of government law, but the Declaration of Independence as well as he invokes completely out of context. Accordingly, the United States defendant's motion to dismiss should be allowed. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, this is written, pay attention, by the Department of Justice. This is not written by the court. Oh, no, no, no. I guess this is written. This is an opinion. This doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. Hold on. Let's check it out. Let's check out who wrote this. Because the way that ended should be, uh, the, the motion to dismiss should be allowed. Oh, report and recommendation. This is from a stupid magistrate. Okay. This is from a stupid magistrate. And when you hear me say stupid magistrate, a magistrate is not a judge. They want to call him a judge. He is not a judge. He's a legislative officer. He's appointed by the legislature. He's appointed by the legislature. Okay? Magistrates are not judges. They never were. Okay. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. This right here, that bringing that up right there, that didn't make any sense what he's saying um, there is something I need to talk to you guys about ladies and gentlemen uh, give me a second somebody just texted me and that took me away from my music and my background because y'all know I got to have my music in my background so we gonna do Al Green and I want y'all just to He's going to do the Beatles, I want to hold your hand. And so let him do that, y'all. And don't, don't mess with Al. Okay? Now, ladies and gentlemen, I showed you guys this right here. And we're going to do this real quick. I can't find the video. It may still be up. But I almost couldn't find this document. Ladies and gentlemen, to stop your foreclosures, I would go over this document. I believe this is the title. Give me a second. How I fought tax foreclosure, I would definitely say it would be under the debt program, but this is a PDF. How I fought foreclosure is what you're looking for, and I do believe this is the title. Uh, give me one second. Let me go because when I re-downloaded the document, it gave me the exact title. Those of you who have foreclosures, Go over this document now I'm not going to advocate the OID portion of it how I fought property tax foreclosure is the name of the document that's what I would do I would follow it I would understand it I would combine it with what you know now because this was done in 2008 8 25 2008 
filed my affidavit of original issue. Notice to the court of defendant's acceptance of claim and notice of court's abandonment of claim into my case. Notice include the following exhibit. Now, ladies and gentlemen, he did the OID to the court and they claimed that he did not do it correctly. Why? Because you must know the percentages, the correct interests. So if I were you, I would do to the best of my knowledge, the a foregoing is accurate. I would actually do a cover letter explaining exactly like that. Now, he said he did the Form 56, making the judge a fiduciary. What I would do first, before you make the judge a fiduciary, remember, you are you don't have any jurisdiction over the case. You yourself are a trustee. Remember, you represent the straw person. You represent the taxpayer. You are not the taxpayer. You represent the taxpayer. The taxpayer is the entity. So what I'm going to suggest is that you guys do the Form 56 correctly. Read the Form 56. Okay? Then do the power of attorney form. I would do the power of attorney form first, making, giving yourself power of attorney over the entity. Then I would appoint the judge as fiduciary. If that's, if that's how I'm doing it. Okay? Now, hold on. He says he's naming a straw man as the lender. Do the power of attorney first, ladies and gentlemen. Follow, follow, follow the steps. Read the documents. Don't just do it because somebody else did it. Don't just do it because somebody else did it. Now, as I told you guys this, I'm going to tell it to you again because I'm very proud of this person who did this. Why? Let's see if it'll show up. Yeah, my screen ain't showing nothing. And that, that bothers me, y'all, because it's supposed to be showing something. Let's see. What is this? This is a manual. Okay, it ain't. I'm so tired of being alone. I'm so tired of all my. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. This is Al Green. Y'all know me and Al. We go way back. Okay. Grits and eggs and all. Okay. I apologize, Al. I, I, I know. I know. But you know that we're going to make jokes about the grits. Come on now. Now, if you guys don't know about Al Green and grits, then YouTube it. Google it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you know about this document, and I can't show it to you right now because my it's just not letting me do it because of the overlay issues. Go and look at it. This person in 2008 did a money order. This shows you that when I came up with the hour style money order, that I am not the first to do it. That it was logical. Okay? Now, what I want to do is this right here. I, I have so much to show you. Broadly speaking, a tax cannot be imposed on a corporation which would not be upon an individual in similar circumstances. Because corporations are people too. Okay? It does not necessarily follow that when the government elects to treat the corporation as a taxable entity, it may disagree or disregard the corporate fiction and tax the corporation on gains really realized by its shareholders individually. Uh, yeah, whatever. Under such circumstances, mere franchise to be a business corporation has under our tax laws no value which is made subject to taxation. Ladies and gentlemen, I just, and I'm going to let you know that I just got this. I, I just said it, but I just got it. It just hit me. Ladies and gentlemen, individual taxpayers are corporations. That's what that's how they're being taxed. And again, 1041s, you're not supposed to be using those stupid 1040s. We gave everybody a 98 series number. I have people contacting me and say, "Well, I never did this and we never did this and we never did that." Ladies and gentlemen, we gave you the number. We got the number for you. If you didn't want to use the corporation according to the way it's supposed to be utilized, sorry, but that's on you. Once you had the number, you should have been doing the research. Some, well, I've been looking this and looking that. Well, that's, um, I'm so glad that many of you have been looking. 
I'm so glad that many of you have been searching. I'm so glad that many of you have been trying to understand all of this. But as I told you, we were only providing a service. We weren't providing education. As an organization, that's not what we signed up for. As I told you, that would take too much time. We would have to be answering questions all day long. And to answer your questions all day long, you would have to pay a whole lot more than that. Because I cannot begin to tell you how time consuming this is. And then to put that weight on all of the volunteers, all of the subcontractors, that would be unreasonable. Again, let me tell you what I just realized. That they're taxing the corporation. They're not taxing you, the private citizen. You are not the taxpayer. The taxpayer is an entity. That's why they have you put that entity's identification number on the form. No, 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 no. Don't you can't say that you're just now getting it too. They have you put the entity, the taxpayer's identification number on the form. Yes, you've heard of a T I N, but yours is known as a S S N. And they have you put your social security number or T-I-N. It's recognized as a T-I-N, not a social security number. Wait, hold on. You don't believe me? Hold on. Hold on. Y'all don't understand what I'm saying. And I know y'all don't understand what I'm saying because I can tell. I can tell. Watch this. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, one devil, both devil. One devil, both devil. We're going to go to bombs. Let's go to in Thwatons. We can go to intuitions, okay? I want to go to intuitions so y'all get the intuitions. Because most of y'all don't understand the intuitions. And see, intuitions from 1040, okay? So we go intuitions, PDF, 1040. Happy or sad, why? And then I'm going to show you why I was doing this video. Why people of makeup and then turn around and make up. Why they keep making up, y'all? I, I just can't see. <laughs> Let me. Let me. Oh, no, you'll never do that to me because I won't allow it. Would you? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why I'm doing this video is because somebody created this document right here. Hold on. Let's go all the way up. What I want is to lie. Mandatory notice of claimant's right to court without fees. They put together this document, but the document is insufficient in explanation. It was simple, but we're going to add current case law. Let me tell you what the Attorney General said. For the sake of the court's integrity and the integrity of the legal profession, it is important that the courts avoid awarding windfall fees and should likewise avoid the appearance of having done so. If the government or the Justice Department are exempt, this is my statement, from payment of litigation, the people for whom the sovereignty rests are exempt. Because if the sovereignty resides in the people, then they are exempt. The people of the state, in their sovereign capacity, except as restrained by some constitutional limitation is as exempt from mere general and local law as the king was of old in the exercise of his sovereign prerogatives. The people as a whole are sovereign. Okay. Hold on. Let's go to number two. Okay. It is often true that instrumentalities of the state are exempt from taxation. It is often, or excuse me, of course true that instrumentalities of the state, state corporations, instrumentalities of the state, well, we're instrumentalities of the United States, hold on, these entities, these straw persons, are exempt from taxation. Now, they'll say we have to prove that the taxpayer is an instrumentality of the state under the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act. So, go into casetext.com and do that all right let me show you see i got 13 days left wait how they do that i can't tell you how i did that okay i can just tell you that i did that all right i'm sorry this is taking so long let's get this to pull up
Sorry. As soon as this pulls up, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do is we're going to specifically stop this video. Because I'm going to explain to you right now why all of this is going on. Because, see, this ain't pulled up yet. And this, this should have pulled up. Let's do that right there so that it pulls all the way up. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why this video is being done because we were the right to proceed in court without the paying of fees. The first thing I showed you was the federal court. See, I, I knew that that was going to be the case. The first thing I showed you was the federal court. That they receive a budget from... This is the administration of justice. It's the court system, ladies and gentlemen. That's why they say the administration of justice because no one else has the right to administer justice but the court system. They pay that money to the administrative office of the United States court who provides the... Watch. I put the United States Office of Administ Administrative Office of the United States Court provides a budget for the court. That's what I put. We're going to do a simple Google search. Simple Google search. Now, while we're doing that search, we're going to wait for that junk to pull up. Okay, because they provide the budget for the courts through your taxes, that budget, see, Congressional Budget Request 2022, Congressional Budget Summary, PDF, okay? Download this, people. You got a federal court case? Download this. This shows I ain't got to pay y'all no fees. I pay taxes. And because I pay taxes, you've already been paid. So what are you sitting up here charging me again for? That's why I showed you that. Download it, people. Then the other thing is 1040. We talked about the instructions. And I said as soon as I pulled this up, I just wanted to show y'all. It ain't letting me do nothing, y'all. As soon as it gets to where it needs to go, I think we're going to be not there because I want to do individuals. I can think of young, young, younger days for the rest of who my life. Okay, what is a taxpayer advocate? Nobody cares about taxpayer advocate service, TAS. Because they don't provide, they don't provide you guys real answers. We both know that. You, if you've ever tried calling them, ask them and see if you get any real answers. Okay, low income taxpayer clinic help. Yeah, whatever. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's it's moving ever so slow, and I don't have much going on in the background today. So give me a second. Okay. I'm so glad it finally let me do something written in information. If you need to write a word, a code, or a dollar amount on this form to explain the item of income or deduction, but don't have enough space to enter the word or code or blah, 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 you can put an asterisk next to the applicable line number and put a footnote at the bottom of the page of your tax form indicating the line number, the word of the code, and the dollar amount you need to enter. For example, ladies and gentlemen, isn't that what I just told you guys to do? If you're filling out the form and you need to make sure that they understand, they understand why you're doing what you're doing, then you have that right to put in to this extent that it is accurate. Okay, the aforementioned is accurate. You can do and or accurate after you do under penalty of perjury and or accurate at the very end of all of that and or accurate then put your signature on there then you're not violating the penalties of perjury if you were truthful ladies and gentlemen this is what most of you don't understand when you file your taxes if you are married but filing separately that gives you one deduction if you are single that gives you one deduction if you are the head of household and you are single that gives you two deductions if you are married and you're head of household that gives you two deductions if you are married and filing jointly you get two deductions married head of household qualifying willingly anyway if you have if you take care of yourself 
for me, I have automatically three deductions. Oz not married, one deduction. Oz the head of household, two deductions. And Oz a dependent. I takes care of myself. Yes, I goes to party all by myself, mama. Okay? Because I take care of myself, that means that that's another dependent. It's another capacity. Your dependents are the capacities for which you operate. If you want more dependents, okay, if you want any person you claim as a dependent under multiple support agreement, okay, any person you who is your dependent only because he or she lives with you in 2020, you are a dependent. You lived with you. Oh, man, I can't live with myself no more. Okay, any person for whom you claimed as a dependent, but didn't include. Okay, but don't include all this down here. That's you. You're a dependent. Head of household. That's another dependent. And the taxpayer, another dependent. And being single, another dependent. Don't take my word for it. Go and ask any tax agent are these different capacities. If they say, but no, and but, 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 give them some fuel for that piece of junk that they're trying to start. Because they're trying to start something when they say, but. No, don't give me no buts. Either it is or it isn't. There's truth and non-truth. Either it is or it isn't. Now, we got the instructions. Okay, oh, I'm sorry, I'm supposed to download. I apologize. I'm supposed to download these instructions because the fact is, here's the problem, ladies and gentlemen. You're not supposed to be following individually. You're supposed to be following as corporations, sole proprietors, because that's why you're being taxed. Okay? That's why you're being taxed. Okay. Yeah. I got the instructions. Now we're going to go back because we need to get the form. The form will pull up a lot quicker because this document is 155, 115 pages. 115 pages, y'all. You know, and I've been spending my days thinking about me. That's right. Thinking about me. Why? I don't know. Oh, because being here with me? You know, being near me, y'all have no idea how special that is. Because I'm special. And I know some of you guys are saying, yes, you sure are special. Anyway, we're going to pull up the 1040 real quick. Because like I said, I want to bring this to an end. One second. Then I'll finish explaining. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, what I should have been explaining to you guys also is understand this. We're going to be doing, see, one dependent. Pay attention. One dependent, if I'm married or whatever, then two dependent, but single, I am head of household, I'm not a qualifying widower, but I take care of myself, someone you can claim. See, you as a dependent, you can claim you as a dependent. Someone can claim, oh no, nobody can claim me as a dependent, sorry, Whew. sorry, got to do that right, sorry. You can claim you as a dependent. If someone else can claim you as a dependent, you can claim you as a dependent. So the name goes right here is you. Y-O-U. It's your second dependent. Then you put the number there. Okay? Qualifies. See instructions. No child tax credit. No credit for other dependents. You don't get that. Leave that alone. Okay? Leave that alone. Ladies and gentlemen, I promise you, this is one of my favorite songs by this man. It is just, look at what you've done. How dare you? Here with me. I just think that this, the words, if you just take the time to listen, nice song by this man. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the 1040. This is not the form for you to fill out. This is the individual income tax return. Individual what? Doesn't say natural individual. Doesn't say private individual. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's see if we...
understand this form because remember I told you it defines the individual as a taxpayer the taxpayer is a dependent let's make sure it defines the individual as a taxpayer let's go down to the bottom baby if you think I'm right under penalties of perjury I declare that I have examined this return and accompanying schedules and statements and to the best of my knowledge and belief they are true and correct and complete declarations of preparer other than taxpayer is based on the information of which the preparer has knowledge and you say when you do this you're gonna put right above here right in and or accurate okay this is the taxpayers income tax form this is for the taxpayer the taxpayer is whom it's not you people it's the entity watch let me show you your social security number they're talking to the taxpayer they're not talking to you they're talking to the taxpayer this is a taxpayer income tax form now hold on it's all about capacity so watch what we do we're gonna do 41 that's right can't wait till it get to 41 now as we mentioned earlier because we're gonna do this real quick this is judiciary fiscal year 2021 I'm gonna put all of these documents you see I'm gonna put these up here this is your proof to the court I don't want to hear it is what you tell them as a matter of fact what I'm gonna do I can't do the link yeah I can't do the link because it's not gonna let me do the link I would love to do the link to have you when you download this yeah no that that's not gonna do okay overview judiciary fiscal year discretionary budget 7.8 billion judiciary fiscal year discretionary budget requests 7.8 billion so why are they charging you mother tax fees I mean filing fees they get paid billions of dollars a year to run the court takes care of their salaries capital and non-capital panel attorney rates increase from 195 per hour and $152 per hour, respectively, for work performed on or after January 1st, 2020. The non-capital panel attorneys, hourly rate is now $1 below the current maximum, $153 per hour. Even the attorneys get paid, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I'm not talking about all the attorneys. I'm talking about the attorneys. Even the Department of Justice, their attorneys get paid. Says, need to support the substantial increase to Article 3 judge confirmation, blah, 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 blah. This is their budget request, ladies and gentlemen, for running the court system. See, look, this request includes sufficient funding and to a add additional 116 full-time equivalents in federal defender organizations and support all project panel attorneys representation ladies and gentlemen I'm sorry I think this is Department of Justice attorneys as well interesting for the defender service account judiciary requests 1.3 billion dollars an increase so when they provide a public defender in those cases they're taken care of the attorneys are paid for by taxpayers dollars you hear them say it all the time so the court's budget is already paid so what are they charging you for hold on remember those cameras and everything ladies and gentlemen 
and the, the police officers and the security officers, because there are two officers when you come into the court. You have the regular security agency that provides the security screening, and then you have the marshals, sheriffs, police officers, all officers of the court. They get paid $24.8 million is what they're asking for. They're, that's the increase. 664 million is what takes care of the security for the court. Your tax dollars. So what are the filing fees for? Start asking that question and then slap this right in front of them and say, excuse me, I'm asking again, why are you trying to charge me filing fees a second time when I've already paid the fees? through my tax paying capacity. That's what this video is for. When they are trying to charge you to access the court. Sorry, I have to finish this document, but I'll get these documents up. They will be, I gotta put them in the same file that I've been putting them in, the release dismissal section, because this deals with everybody going to court, whether it's criminal or civil whether it's federal or state. The state courts operate the same way. They get paid through the state tax dollars. No way in the world you should be paying filing fees. Now, I can't go back through all of the case law that I pulled up where we talk about, let's go back. Sorry. There are a couple of cases that I looked up and these cases said that the courts can charge you, that people were having it wrong that they didn't, they didn't understand what was going on. How stupid of them. How stupid of them, these people, to not understand what was going on. Shame on them. Ladies and gentlemen, we got Aloe Black, and he gonna be singing a little bit about family. Okay. Aloe, I've become a very good fan of Aloe. Like I said, I am... Um, I'm very impressed with Aloe. He, he reminds me of Anthony Davis. I don't know who came first, Anthony or Aloe. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do a parallel search. We're not going to do keyword search. Now, this is going to take away all the other searches I did after it originally because I just kept, clicked forward on keyword search. This is your right to justice and not be charged fees. There were... No, as a matter of fact, let's do it this way, and then we're going to cut this video off. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this right here, of course it is true that instrumentalities of the state are exempt from taxation. This is all of this right here. The appellant argues that they are entitled to invoke this well-established principle of constitutional law for their own benefit and cite the support of the position of the Supreme Court in these cases. In these cases, guess what? <laughs> Let me tell you something. The Supreme Court says you can't be taxed and you cannot be charged for entering into the court. In each of these cases, that's why I put it here. But what they are saying, pay attention. What they are saying is, uh, excuse me, homeboy. Uh, we, we done changed that. That's the way it used to be. It ain't like that no more. Okay, and I put that information in showing how they say it's not like that anymore. Here are some of the cases. The right to justice shall be administered without delay, denial, and or prejudice. Now, I want you to pay attention to some of the first ones in the right to justice. The right to justice shall be administered without sale. You don't have to pay to play. They say, well, that's what the um, fee waiver form is for. No, because the fee waiver form is not a right. I'm not asking you to waive the fees. You cannot apply the fees because it is a taxation. So I'm not asking for a waiver. I'm asking you to recognize that it is illegal for you to charge me to access the court. Just that simple. That's what we're doing, ladies and gentlemen. I hope this information proves beneficial to you. We talked about a lot, but remember, our focus is on the fact that you have the right to access the court. Okay? And you have the right to access the court without fees. That's what we're going to focus on in this video. And then remember, we've given you the budgetary documents for the court.
this ain't it. It's the other one. So I, I apologize. It's this right here and fiscal year. So what I didn't do is I didn't, I don't think I downloaded this. So let's download it now so that you guys can see me downloading it. And I'm going to take, I am running on auxiliary power. And while I'm running on auxiliary power, I will go ahead and upload this. Okay. Uh, hold on. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about court A R E I L L E G A L and I put proof that the court fees are illegal. That's the name of this document. Any federal court you involved in in a civil matter, you give this to them and say what the are y'all doing? You got to appeal you give this to them because this is for the entire judiciary, including the appeals court. Guess what? The Supreme Court, too. You want to access the Supreme Court? Uh-uh. Get the, out of my way. I have the right to do this. Not asking for permission. If you want permission, go ask your mama. But I ain't asking you for no permission. Now, we're going to put the 1041. Now, I want you to understand... This is for an estate or an a, tr a trust, i.e. straw man. Deceiving estate, simple trust, complex trust, qualifying disability trust, ESBT. Hold on. Let's do this. Uh, uh oh, messed up. Got to do this real quick. We're going to cover this again. So this ain't going to be the only time this document will be up. You guys can get this on your own. It's the 1041. But understand something. Initial return, final return, amended return is your best friend. Okay? We don't want, you can do a change of fiduciary name, change of fiduciary address if you want to do the form 56. But I wouldn't do that on this just yet. Okay? I wouldn't even do, if you want to set up uh, another name with the Internal Revenue Service, you can. You want to get another EIN if you think your EIN has expired or something you can do that but what I want to show you this is oh this is my song y'all hey see TIN taxpayer identification number instead of saying EIN it says TIN taxpayer identification number as I said to you it's all taxpayer filings these are all taxpayer filings. The moment you sign, it used to say it. Oh, see, other than a taxpayer. Okay, if it's being signed by someone other than a taxpayer. Ladies and gentlemen, these are taxpayer filings. When you sign this, you are agreeing that you are the taxpayer. Okay, by the way, I've already applied for my uh, taxpayer PTIN, preparers, taxpayer identification number. Okay, and this is for paid preparer use only. So, just letting y'all know this. Now, am I giving you guys some ideas? That's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to let you know what's been going on. I'm trying to tell you that you've been filing the wrong documents. Those of you who received the 98 series number, you're supposed to be filing and doing everything under that 98 number. If you haven't been doing, you need to start doing some amendments. Okay? And non-exempt, charitable, uh-uh, you ain't doing nothing right there. Go over the instructions for the 1041. They are simple. This is only three pages, ladies and gentlemen. It is not complicated. That's 1 through 30 on the first page, and it's like you're taking a test. And it's 1 through 30 on the second page. Okay, and then the third page is 1 through 14. So you got 60 questions you have to answer. You're taking tests in school that had 100, 200, 300 questions. You did the SATs. 
Well, some of you did the SAT. Some of you didn't think that you were smart enough to do the SATs. Not realizing that the SATs, all the answers are right there. Doesn't matter. Ladies and gentlemen, just wanted to bring this information to your attention. Do your taxes the correct way. And then put the statement after, hold on. Everything is one of my, I ain't none of my dreams. People say I'm foolish. People say I'm blinded by faith. Okay. I, guys, like I said, you guys don't understand. When I first heard this song, I said my words exactly. I said whoever sings this song did a very good job. And I told this to inmates. Okay. And I kept playing it and playing it and playing it. And let me tell you something. I am very glad that my way was aloe black okay because this man has got some skills ladies and gentlemen after you see this last line if you want declaration of preparer you can put a line through that or leave it at is as is and say and or accurate leave it the way it is because you're the preparer and just put and or accurate Okay, literally just that simple. I'm not going to be changing anything. There's no need to put out, put a line through penalty of perjury or anything like that. Go ahead and sign it and then put and or accurate. You can even put an asterisk and say and or accurate because isn't that the instructions? If you need to add something else in the instructions, does it not say that you can put an asterisk and put and or accurate? So that's what I'm suggesting. Okay, so do you want to do a grantor's type trust? Do you want to do a simple trust? Okay, either way, ladies and gentlemen, you'll have to figure out the type of trust that you're doing. See, you notice that there is no error, I mean no other, but we'll talk about that soon, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, I got to let you guys go. I am grateful that we've had this opportunity and time to talk. Again, this is about court fees, but this is also about that entity, that that entity, your right to have property and not be taxed, and to enter the court without charge, without fees, okay? That's what this is about. All right, now that, oh, I did the wrong thing. I See, talking to y'all, you see what y'all do to me? All right, I got to go. The statement that I'm getting ready to put in there is the one I had highlighted at the bottom. And so I'm going to have this document finished. So those of you who are expecting it and waiting for it, don't email, don't text, don't write, don't Skype, don't anything. Just um, now, some of you don't know. Uh oh, get, get away. Some of you, I said get away. Those are the draft sections. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. What I need to explain to you is some of you don't know about the Skype account. I have an old Skype account that I periodically use. Don't use it a lot. Some of you were in contact with me in Skype. You might be able to reach me in Skype again. Don't know. Uh, but just heads up. All right. Got to go. Take care of yourselves, y'all. Got to go. Got to go. Got to go. I'm out of here.